Productive, direct, and extensive. That is how Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen assessed her talks with Chinese officials in Beijing. Yellen warned her host on several, hosts on several matters during the weekend visit. She raised the possibility of sanctions if China provides any weapons for Russia to use against Ukraine. She also urged Beijing to stop exporting environmental products that are cheaper to buy than the ones made in the West. Actions taken by the PRC today can shift world prices. And when the global market is flooded by artificially cheap Chinese products, the viability of American and other foreign firms is put into question. Let's bring in Scott Kennedy. He's a senior advisor and trustee chair in Chinese business and economics at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you so much for being with us. Last month, Chinese President Xi Jinping met with American CEOs to try to reassure them about working in the Chinese market. Between that and Yellen's visit, is there improvement in the U.S.-China business relationship? Uh, compared to a year ago when we were all talking about balloons and the likelihood of war over Taiwan, things have stabilized. Uh, we now have competition without conflict. But that doesn't mean we have competition without tensions. And uh, because of Chinese industrial policy uh, and its effect on national security, as well as on fair trade, uh, the secretary raised these worries uh, with Beijing and did so quite directly. And help us understand the dispute over environmental exports. Um, why is Secretary Yellen focused on that? Uh, well, China uh, is by far and away the world's largest uh, producer of electric vehicle batteries as well as electric vehicles. Uh, last year, they produced about nine and a half million electric vehicles. They have capacity for 18 million. And a lot of that can end up being exported because Chinese demand just hasn't uh, come back after the pandemic the way they thought so. And China's industrial policy machine has continued to advance. And so that means EVs, batteries, solar going on to global markets at extremely low prices, crowding out uh, their competition for market-based economies in the U.S., uh, Europe, and elsewhere. And that obviously is a threat to also American jobs as well. After a visit like this, how should we understand what, we, what we're looking for in terms of either improvements between, in the relationships between the United States and China, or is a visit like this uh, just successful if it keeps the channels of communication open uh, with such a, uh, a strong adversary? Well, the U.S. and China have about a dozen uh, dialogues uh, that they're engaging in, and, and Secretary Yellen uh, heads up two of those. They announced a third during her trip to look at issues of balanced growth, this overcapacity problem. I think now that uh, they've had these dialogues for a while, I'm sure that the administration and Congress are looking to move from just simply talk to results. And mm -hmm. so I think we're going to need to see some progress on the Chinese side with constraining supply or expanding domestic demand or the U.S. is going to uh, follow the EU and others. This is a game of musical chairs, and the U.S. doesn't want to be the last one sitting down. And so we might see tensions rise later this year with an investigation in some of these products or a broader investigation into Chinese industrial policy overall. And, of course, we have the election coming up, which means there'll be even greater attention placed on China. Let me ask you, that as a final question, this, this warning about Russia. So Yellen warned about supporting Russia, but as she was leaving or heading out of town, Russian for, the Russian foreign minister was arriving for talks with Chinese officials. What's, what's your read on the relationship between China and, and Russia with respect to the war in Ukraine, and how much leverage does the U.S. have uh, to, to issue these kinds of warnings? Well, um, the relationship between Russia and China has become far closer than anyone expected. Uh, President Putin and Xi Jinping have met uh, almost 50 times, and uh, their relationship is really close and personal, and their trade between the two has skyrocketed following Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine. I don't think that there is a lot that the U.S. can do to fundamentally break those ties because it's it's uh, bound together by their common work concerns and antipathy about the West. But the U.S. can, through these kinds of warnings, try and reduce the amount of aid that China su 
provides to Russia that can be useful in that war. It looks like the Chinese are slowly stepping up closer to the edge. And Secretary Yellen is issuing uh, a stronger warning than the U.S. has issued before. Really helpful. Thank you. Scott Kennedy with the Strate Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thanks again.